So I'm making preparations to continue with the canoe. This is the Flewellen canoe built in or near Washburn, Maine. The entire interior needs to get stripped. It's very thick varnish. And I've done some test areas, which you can see here. And I'll be using the Circa 1850 varnish remover. And I ordered that and that was delivered the other day. And I'll also be using the heat gun, primarily the heat gun. Because I, in the test strip, the, uh, the varnish remover did a great job. It's just that I'm going to have to use a lot of product. So I'm going to take off what I can with heat and uh, a putty knife and gently scrape away the varnish. And then I'll do a full canvassing uh, with the varnish remover and really scrub that in and remove that material. And I think I'm, that's going to yield the best product in this case. And then follow it up with... Uh, some steel wool uh, with with the stripper as well to really really get into all the nooks and crannies and some uh, specialty tools to get into the, the tight areas so first things first is getting off the out whales and i'm going to leave the outside skin on until all the stripping operations are done so i'll show you exactly how i do it when using heat and also with the varnish remover and uh, that'll be just about it for the interior. Then once the interior is uh, cleaned and sanded and all the varnish is removed, then we'll move to removing the outside skin, evaluating the planking on the uh, exterior of the canoe, looking at that integrity, start ordering material for the rebuild, restoration. <laughs> see after that first application of the circa 1850 it's uh it's cleaning up really nice i don't think i would have had those results uh with the first application of the varnish remover without first removing it with heat so it's going to be a tedious process just going to keep going i'm going to finish this quarter here by applying more stripper and uh, i'm using a uh, a brass brush being gentle to get into these crevices and then using my teardrop scraper 
to really detail the, uh, the varnish removal in between these tight spots in between the half ribs and the full ribs. So just uh, going to keep going like that, um, applying, scraping, buffing, and then uh, sanding out, and then uh, vacuuming out the, the debris and, uh, until the whole boat's done. Circa 1850 works like a champ though. of this restoration has been completed uh, it was heavy varnish heavy finish and what I used uh, previously mentioned was uh, circa 1850 I used two different products not knowing how each of them work because I had never used the product before it worked exceptionally well it's just that this varnish was so thick that I also needed to use a heat gun in order to remove a lot of the uh, old varnish which had been existing for a very long time. So this is the result of just stripping and a light sanding and what I intend to use also is some rainbow oxalic acid. This is a product that I picked up from Woodworkers Warehouse. Uh, again, um, hoping to get a better result to lighten up the water a little bit more. Uh, there are so many ribs and half ribs that need to be replaced on this canoe. So uh, I think I'm going to hold off on the bleaching of this wood now until all the repairs are done so I can get a closer match of all the wood, the new wood and the old existing. You can do it up to two times on uh, using this particular product on a wood surface without affecting uh, the overall outcome, without actually changing the characteristics of the wood. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to hold off until all the wood repairs are done. So ultimately the next step that needs to occur is I need to get this fiberglass skin off the exterior of the canoe. So I'm gonna flip the canoe and uh, it's a polyester resin that I believe is holding this fiberglass cloth on to the uh, outside of the planking. And it's gonna require, again, another long tedious process of just heat gun and scraping it off, minimizing the damage to the planking of the canoe. And uh, so I can proper evaluate how much material to order. Um, the rib stock is going to be, I don't know, I think I have like 18 or 20 ribs that with two thirds of those that definitely need replacement and the other third are going to require maybe, uh, you know, some back beveling, some uh, backside repairs. However, I don't think that's how I want to leave it. I think I'm going to just do wherever I see a cracked rib, I think I'm going to replace the entire rib in this case because they... They are ultimately cracked all the way through. Okay, so now that I have the canoe turned over, I have access to the full exterior surface of the canoe. Simply going to be applying heat using a heat gun and I'll be wearing my mask to protect myself from uh, the fumes. I don't know what type of paint this is. I don't know anything. So, and I, but I do know that this polyester resin or some type of resin and I'm going to be heating it up and uh, all should protect themselves uh, from those off gases uh, applying the heat. So I'm going to start at the bow. And, and work towards the gunnels and uh, get this entire skin off so I can start my evaluation 
of the planking and uh, and other components of the canoe. So as you can see, I'm in the process of removing the skin from the canoe. It's coming off uh, slowly, but it's coming off with some heat and a little bit of elbow grease with uh, putty knives and scrapers or whatever. So uh, whatever tool is uh, necessary at the time, really. But those are the tools I've been using so far. So uh, in order to preserve the planking on the outside of the canoe, which is extremely important, it, it's easy in this case uh, due to the fact that there's an epoxy skin it's a fiberglass canoe and removing that can also remove the planking from or remnants or pieces of the planking on the on the wood and uh, you want to prevent that if at all possible so I think in terms of this, since this is the first time that I've ever removed the fiberglass covering from a wood canvas canoe, which ultimately this is a wooden ribbed canoe, um, you know, canvas is going to fall right off. This is, this is adhered to the wood pretty well. So I'm looking for the best technique um, without damaging the wood. Uh, so far I've done uh, an adequate job. Uh, there are some areas that will need to be filled that I've, uh, I've gouged a little bit. Um, however, I'm just thinking about it, and I, and I think my next process to help expedite the removal of the skin is going to be creating a seam down the entire length of the bottom of the hull, uh, removing down to the bare wood the fiberglass material, and then scraping and he, applying heat and then scraping down to the gunnel side vice coming in the upward direction which I have in sideways direction which I have been doing I think if I can create that seam and then work the, the skin down towards the gunnels there's less likelihood of the tools that I'm using to remove the fiberglass covering to gouge the wood and uh, it may uh, it may just provide a better result in that regard. That's what I'm going with. I don't know, there's not a lot of information on this, uh, and it is a tedious process. This is an epoxy product, it's an epoxy resin, and it comes off with heat, but it's not coming off very quickly, so uh, I'm just trying to uh, expedite that, that process. It could take some time. So again, uh, just my thought process and, and how I'm gonna go about it from here is creating that seam then working each half down towards the gunnels, and we'll see how that goes. So I've created my seam all along the bottom side of the center line of the hull. And uh, my strategy is going to be to peel it downwards from each center line to each uh, starboard and port side gunnel. Um, the other thing I realized too is this paint is so thick. And I'm dealing with four layers of fiberglass, uh, both on the bow and stern. So what I've determined is I'm, I'm go also going to be uh, removing all the paint. And I'm just going to be using my heat gun and scraping that off because I need to uh, identify where the layers end. And uh, it's just uh, <clears throat> in order to successfully take off the fiberglass without damaging the planking and preserving that as much to the maximum extent, I need to take all the paint off too. It's coming off pretty, pretty decently with the heat gun. It is uh, pretty thick paint. Also, the other benefit of removing the paint 
is that the heat from the heat gun is more effective in delaminating the fiberglass from the hull. So this is what I'm dealing with. This is the first layer of fiberglass. Second layer. Third layer. And uh, at the at the bow, there were four layers, and you know wrapped around the bull nose here, wrapped around the stem. So. It's just a very slow process here. And got some rot that's uh, resting below the, the fiberglass here. So there's gonna be some planking replacement here. Actually, not too much material has been removed. Very thin veneer. You can see it's almost transparent there. Um, I think that's hard to avoid uh, in this case but I'm being as careful as I possibly can to salvage as much as the planking as I possibly can because this planking is not cheap. And uh, so I'm doing one half at a time and obviously I have a long ways to go.
Okay. Let's talk about this a little bit. Half the boat is done uh, with a fiberglass removal. What I have run into is a bunch of repairs that have occurred over time. Uh, when I moved this canoe down into the shop, it was the most heavy canoe that I've ever lifted. And I did it by myself, and I probably shouldn't have. I think this canoe weighed easily over 120 pounds when I brought it down. And I'm, dis I'm discovering why. And that's because matte fiberglass was placed from the forward quarter thwart all the way to the stern, about midway up on the hull. And it's because I have a hole here in the stern. This is all extremely spongy, but that can be explained by the ribs that are broken on the inside. And the stem, I'm gonna, I, I think the stem is absolutely gone. So um, there was no structure back here. So compensating repairs included the matting. So what I had, I had a layer of fiberglass and then paint. One layer, fiberglass, and then paint. And what I think that was, was the original build. And then on top of that paint was the matting with another layer of fiberglass cloth painted. Then another layer of matting and then another layer of fiberglass on top of that painted. So in the paint layers on top of the final finish coat after all these repairs had occurred over time was easily an eighth of an inch thick my heat gun here wasn't penetrating through the fiberglass cloth to release the resin from each layer i had to completely go over the entire this half of the hull with uh, the heat gun and, and remove that paint. Uh, so otherwise I was just filling up my shop with fumes and I wasn't even being effective with heating the fiberglass cloth for removal. So I uh, scraped all the paint off using the heat gun and uh, then was able to achieve some release, uh, resin release by then being able to apply the heat and remove each layer at a time. Five layers of fiberglass. I don't know. I, I definitely see some matting uh, midship. It doesn't seem to be as thick. This is uh, this is the stern. So the starboard side doesn't seem to be as thick. It's about from the stern seat where the stern man would uh, motor this. This is a motored canoe. So it's where he would sit all the way up to the forward quarter thwart. On the port side, the matting existed all the way back to the stern. So I made a post like, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, fiberglass removal. I've plenty of experience with fiberglassing. And well, uh, I was wondering what I was doing wrong and, and there's, I don't think there's any trick to this. You know, when there's that much matting, you just have to grind it out. And, and that's exactly what has happened. Um, I still have another whole half of the canoe of fiberglass to remove. But uh, with that being said, I'm up against a couple things. So I'm going to end the video here. I, I had hoped to have had all the fiberglass off. But I'm up against a personal challenge and I'm having double knee replacements, full knee replacements done in two days. Well, one of them in two days and then the right knee six weeks later. So what I wanted to do, because a lot of people are showing a lot of interest in this canoe project. And, and I wanted to put something out because uh, what I have done thus far is I've removed the decks and the outwheels and stripped the entire interior of the canoe. And then also uh, have removed half the fiberglass. There's only so much you can video by showing the removal of the other side of the canoe. So 
it's going to be a while before my next video until I get back on my feet and get healthy and strong enough. But I need to do this so I can enjoy my trips out in my own canoes again and, and continue to enjoy this. It's, uh, it's painful to stand up as long as I have uh, been down here on this concrete floor. And, and it's just time to have them repaired and, and get back to full strength again because it's impacting all the things we all like to do, canoeing and adventuring and, and also uh, working with our hands and, and doing this type of project. So um, that's why I'm ending the video here. No sense in showing the removal of fiberglass on the other side of the canoe uh, because you've already, I've already shown what I've done here and the process that I used for the removal here. There's probably better techniques or methods. I, I you know, with the sandwiching uh, aspects of what I found here, uh, it was just added weight over time. A, a new, uh, a new ding, a new bang, a new broken rib, more fiberglass was added to this canoe, uh, hence the weight. So uh, it's gonna be a much lighter canoe when this, when this project is done. No question. I think I'm going to go three layers of fiberglass and they can all be wetted out at one time, I believe. I've never wetted out more than two layers at one time, but I believe three is not a problem. So uh, it's going to be three layers and then uh, reinforcements on the bow and stern stems. And then uh, maybe, maybe a football, another layer of football on on the on the keel bottom of the hull because this is a canoe that's going to be motored on the allagash from uh, can't remember what exact henderson bridge down to poland pond on the allagash and so there are rocks in that river and uh so i think that's enough fiberglass the matting is not required uh, the matting was probably added because that's what they had on hand at the time or whatever. Thanks for watching, tuning in to this project. I know it's been a slow project and I, I just uh, haven't had a whole lot of time uh, with other things as well. I guess I'm not your uh, best YouTuber in terms of getting out weekly content. It's just not how I work. So I appreciate all your comments. I am getting comments uh, on previous projects. And, and in the meantime, until I come up with my next video, please feel free to watch all my other restorations and my canoe trips and everything else and, and leave a comment. I, I really enjoy them. I answer all of them and I read all of them, obviously. So uh, thanks for all the support. And I'll see you on the other side of uh, my little procedure there, and we'll get this canoe done. Thanks a lot.